Hello and welcome to the Dividend Cafe weekly video. I am David Bonson and I am here to bring you a little week in review market commentary as we do every week, but I'm doing it uh, this week quite early. We're sending it to you before the 4th of July holiday because I have a sneaking suspicion a lot of you are not going to be engaged in such thrilling conversation topics as high yield bond spreads and the Federal Reserve once you get into your 4th of July weekend. So as I'm recording, we got a little bit of time here to go on Tuesday in the market. You're receiving this on Wednesday. And uh, the market will be closed Thursday. Uh, actually, it's only going to be open half day on Wednesday, and then it'll be closed Thursday, and they'll be open on Friday. But no man, woman, or child will be manning any trading desks all over this country on Friday. So it's functionally like a four and a half day weekend, but there's one market day in between where you will you will have a ghost town on Wall Street. I assure you, I am out here in New York myself right now. Um, as far as this week goes, I'm going to just kind of quickly cover some of the basics. You know, we know that President Trump and President Xi had their little rendezvous in Japan over the weekend, and it went exactly how we had kind of forecasted. Really, the best case scenario was that they would call a truce. They would sort of hit the pause button. The additional tariffs that have been threatened were not escalated forward. Uh, they did not peel back any of the, the prior tariffs. Those are still on. Um, they the uh, China allegedly has agreed to increase some purchase of U.S. agricultural products in this interim period. And then President Trump lifted the ban on business with Huawei which uh, the Huawei Technologies company is very involved in supply chain. There's a number of uh, relevant implications around that particular aspect affecting a lot of the U.S. tech sector, and that got um, lifted. So it pretty much checked all the boxes for as good as it could have gotten, other than the fact that there isn't a final deal. And we don't have the ultimate clarity, which I think is ultimately what the market is going to be wanting. Um, there is some talk now that, oh, this could be a negative because the Fed has sort of kind of said, oh, because of the trade war, we're going to have to cut rates to help the economy. And, and then now the trade stuff is looking better. So maybe the market's all prepped for a Fed cut and the Fed won't feel the need to do so. And I get the logic of it, but I disagree in this sense. I don't believe for a second that any of the Fed talk or posturing or changing or altering, revising towards a rate cut ever had anything to do with the trade war. I think it was always about the fact that they had buyer's remorse for the last couple rate hikes that they did in the latter portion of 2018 that uh, stripped a lot of liquidity out of the credit markets. And I think that right now their cover is going to be that they're so far below their own inflation target. You have, by most standards, including the one they look to the most, approximately 1.6% inflation rate, and they're targeting a 2% inflation rate. So with inflation expectations below their target, their desire to um, unwind some of the credit contraction that they put into the market with the last couple rate hikes, I think that they're going to go forward with a rate cut here next month. Um, but the idea that the trade issue could be a cover to not do it, it's certainly a risk, but we I, I don't uh, believe that that will prove out to be the case. The, the story right now in the markets is essentially a big question as to how the strength of the economy. And everyone is aware that there is a Fed providing some support. And then you have a question mark around where the trade war is. I personally have questions as to what damage may already been done in the business sector. Um, and we're going to get more data in the weeks and more likely the months ahead to kind of help inform us of that. So, uh, look, the, the bottom line update on the trade issue is that it, the markets got what they wanted. Markets are up a little bit on the week, not huge, but they had been up obviously huge. And we know from the month of June was the biggest June in the S&P since 1955, and it was the biggest June for the Dow since the Great Depression, 1938. Uh, the first half of 2019 in the market, five out of six months were positive, and it was the biggest uh, half of a year, half of a calendar year in the market since 1997. I will point out, 1997 ended up being up huge in the second half as well, 
and all of 1998 and all of 1999. Each of these periods had an over 20% return in the markets. And so there's no reason to think it's going to look exactly the same as before, but it certainly provides a precedent that just because you've had a good half a year, it doesn't mean you're done. People that missed out on the two and a half years after the first half of 1997 probably could never recover some of those gains. It was that such was the opportunity set of that period. Uh, now, at the end of the day, fundamentally right now, I'm looking very closely at the cash flows of the companies we own. And we really like what we're seeing. We really like bottom-up fundamental performance. Uh, the earnings multiple of the overall S&P is a tiny bit high, not much. Um, it's lower than it's averaged over the last decade or so, but it's uh, higher than it's averaged over the last four decades. Now, then you compare it to uh, rent divided by median home prices, and you have real estate that is far above its 50-year average evaluation. Bonds, is not even close. You got interest rates divided by prices are extremely low, uh, perhaps than any period they've been in 50 years. So it is not really so much a question of whether or not we like equity valuations relative to past equity valuations. It's whether or not we like equity valuations relative to any other asset class. And the answer continues to be we want to be selective. We, we, I happen to think the whole market could very well continue going, but I still don't like the idea of owning the entire market. I like the idea of being selective. Uh, healthcare was the worst performing sector in the first half of 2019, and it was up over 8%. Energy was the second worst performing sector, and it was up over 13%. We think there's still plenty of value in a couple of those areas. But again, we want to approach it based on dividend growth, which is just simply what we do and what we believe in uh, at the core of our beings here at the Bonson Group. There's a lot of DividendCafe.com this week of charts of um, other topics that I get into, and I just unfortunately don't have time to circle around all of those here on the video this week. Uh, I do want you to read DividendCafe.com, even if you skip the entire commentary, but I do share some reflections there and some thoughts that are important to me about the 4th of July holiday, not only as an American, um, as a citizen, as a patriot, but also as an investor. Now, I think that it, it, it may be an interesting uh, contemplation for you at DividendCafe.com and my kind of closing comments about the 4th of July so check all that out. Reach out with any questions or comments. And thank you for viewing the Dividend Cafe video. And always check out our Dividend Cafe podcast and, of course, the full written commentary with charts at DividendCafe.com. And thank you again. Happy Fourth of July.